Hi guys, welcome back um, to another Bible and film series. Today, shall we talk about Noah and his assignment of building the ark? Now, this starts at Genesis 5, where it first speaks about the genealogy from Adam to Noah. Then you see all the ages. Now, the ages may seem quite unbelievable, but we never know all the genetically modified food we're consuming nowadays. Maybe it might be shortening our lifespan where they, during that time, they all had organic food that might have something to do with the ages being inflated. But nonetheless, we are given some context here. When human beings began to increase, then God said we would be limited to 120 years. Now, according to the Guinness World Record, um, the current ages of record holders are from ranging from 117 to even 122. And I'll try to attach that in the reference in the description. So there was Noah who the Lord found favor from. Although the Lord saw or God saw that there was evil was rampant around the world. He found um, he would even spare it. It, was, it seemed that he would consider to spare the whole world just because of Noah being a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, walking faithfully with God. Now, because the earth was corrupt, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways, God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence. So he assigned Noah this task of building the ark. And it's quite specific. You know, 50 cubits, 300 cubits long with a roof opening. All the instructions, the blueprint of this was given to Noah. And Noah was to bring into the ark two of all the creatures, male, female, every kind of bird, animal, kind of creature moving along the ground, every kind of food. Um, as storage in the ark. And Noah followed everything as commanded. Genesis 7. Now his whole family was there included. Then for 40 days and 40 nights, um, this flood was going to encompass all the earth from seven days. And it says Noah was 600 years old when this happened. The family was still intact. The animals were still intact. And for 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth. And as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The water rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark flooded on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. Right. And the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. If you want, um, you can read this online, everything. It's available, but I'll provide the link in the description of the New International Version. You can change the interpretation if you want. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals. And then after that, the waters continued to recede until the 10th month. And on the first day, the tops of the mountains became visible. And 40 days now, that's 
going to be a recurring number if we study the Bible of temptation, of trials, tribulations. So it is quite notable. It takes 40 days. And the test was the dove. Um, finding nowhere to perch, that means the water was still there. But when it came back, um, it meant it could be inhabitable or habitable rather. Bringing in, a, even bringing in here a freshly plucked olive leaf, signaling that it was all right to um, go back to land and set up tent for the family. Then, yeah, again, God said to Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and the wives, bring out every kind of living creature. Now it was time to release everything, all the storage. And there might be a right time to do so, in other words. Um, so whether we need training, there's a time to perform, to execute the mission that we're given. Um, to put the training, put the theory into practice. And this depiction here might exemplify this. Mm -hmm. So God sort of regretted doing this. And he said, as long as the earth endures, like all the natural disasters, because it is quite... Um, we did use the word detriments before, but quite damaging, quite, um, I'll put the right word on the screen. To create all these natural disasters. But he said, never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Now, this phrase at the start is quite important because especially right now we got COP26, we got the um, arising issue of climate change and how that impacts our environment and the longevity of our earth. So this is quite relevant. Right. And I believe this is the final one. Um, God's covenant with Noah, God's promise. Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and dread of you will fall on all the beasts on the earth and all the birds. Every creature on the fish of the sea that are given to your hands. Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you, just as I gave you in the green plants. And I'll give you everything. And we will have this authority over the earth, this dominion. And it also shows that we're more than capable um, to make an impact, to contribute to society. Um, sometimes we feel discouraged, but if you're not, we're more than capable. Um, but you must not eat meat, right? That will be further explored in the later chapters, like the New Testament, the Bible. Be fruitful, increase in number, multiply. Increase on it. Perhaps this even shows us that we have a greater mission. You know, we can live, we can um, be, we can create a legacy by being fruitful, by increasing in number, by having, um, inspiring others, multiplying on the earth, increasing um, fruitfulness, compassion, being a good example. And that hopefully trickles down to other people and they do the same thing to others.
that God said to Noah, and I'll establish my covenant with you and your descendants. Right? This is a sign of my of the covenant, and that's symbolized by a rainbow in the clouds as a promise of God. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I remember my covenant between me and you and all the living creatures. Mm -hmm. This is a sign of covenant I have established between me and all the life. Yeah, and it goes, there's some further details here that you could read on your own. And this is not to say that Noah was perfect, you know. Here, Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. Then he became drunk and lay. Sometimes things like that happen. But good thing his sons was with him. And some of them even covered him. Um, you know, their father's nakedness. We do something foolish. And we're not uh, sober. So I guess just be careful sometimes including me. And possibly um, to have good friends, make sure if something happens to us, we got like someone trustworthy with us, someone supports us, someone who supports us, who's with us, uh, companionship so we don't feel alone. That's probably what we can learn here as well. Here in the social network, um, which is based on the meteoric rise of Facebook, it may be striking to find that Mark Zuckerberg bears a lot of similarities with Noah and the story of Noah's Ark. Well, first of all, uh, Mark was ahead of his time, which can also be seen in the age of Noah as depicted. And besides this, he was given a vision um, from God, whereas Mark was, had allegedly um, been inspired by the idea from three other Harvard students, the Winklevoss twins, of course. But nonetheless, he pursued um, something greater from the idea, from the initial idea and followed through with it. And then when God said, commanded um, Noah to increase in number and fruitfulness, that can also be seen in Facebook when four months um, Facebook was available in 40 universities. And I put the number on screen about how many Facebook users are in 2021. Finally, um, there was the, if you recall, there was a moment when Noah released a dove to see if land was inhabitable. That can also be seen in the social network when Mark created a site to compare the features of different Harvard students that can be seen as a pilot scheme as the dove tested the waters. So did Mark, um, you know, spreading the word of the site to his colleagues. So before we dive into something, it may be wise to test the waters, so to speak, even um, remember to delegate and have other members of our team in case we are vulnerable. But that's all for today's video. Peace.